Luke chapter 17. Amen. Verse 1 down to 4. The Bible said, then said he unto his disciples, who? Who is he? It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. In other words, he said, listen, it's going to be some stuff going to happen. Folks going to offend you. People's going to hurt you. Folks going to do things to make you sad. It's folks going to do things to make you have resentment. It's going to leave you with animosity and bitterness. He said it's impossible that it won't come. It's going to come. If you are saved, you're going to have to go through some hurt. But woe unto him through whom they come. Notice what he's saying. It's going to come through somebody. Satan going to, no, this flesh. Folks is going to afflict you. You're going to go through some challenges. Amen with offense. He said you can't help it, but it's going to come. It might come in your family. It might come through your job. It might come from your church family. But he said the one that's causing the pain, woe unto him through whom they come. I like the word they because it means you're going to go through different persecutions and different pains and different sufferings at the hands of others. If it were better for him that a millstone was hanged about his neck and cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. He said, listen, he said, you better off killing yourself. You better off throwing yourself, put a millstone on your neck, cast yourself into the sea than to offend one of my little ones. So you, you, these folks don't know what they're doing. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass, or that word trespass means sin, against you, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day. And seven times in a day, turn again to thee, saying, I'm sorry. Thou shalt forgive him. Are y'all listening? Y'all gonna listen out the well, though. I'm gonna read those verses three and four again. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. If your brother violates you, if your brother does something to you to offend you, the Bible said you go to him and tell him. Right? Don't talk behind his back. Don't go with his brother start talking about him. You know, he shouldn't even say it that, man. I don't like what he said to me, man. The Bible said if you're going to be a child of God, you go to him. And you should be approachable. I shouldn't have to feel like if I come to him, I got to get ready to squawk. I should better go to you as a brother. Listen, brother, you offended me. X, Y, Z, you didn't know no better. You don't know anything going on in my life. Man, you shouldn't even say that. That's a rebuke, ain't it? <laughs> he said, go to him and rebuke him. And if he repent. That's a big condition. If he say, I'm sorry. Forgive him. And if he trespass against these seven times in the war, it's a lot of patience. You keep stepping on my toe all day. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh. But it sounds like he's intentionally doing it right here. If, if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee saying, I'm sorry. That's your forgiving. Jesus I understand what they say. It's a hard saying. Who can be saved? You know, I love reading y'all out my message. 
He said, be alert. If you see your friends going wrong, correct him. That sounds to me like some matters don't even have to be brought before the pastor. Y'all should be, the people should be mature enough to go to each other. Instead of calling a conference meeting. Pastor, I need, we need to sit with y'all. He said here, if you see your friend going wrong, correct him. If he responds, forgive him. Even if it's personal against you. And repeat it seven times through the day. And seven times he says, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. Forgive him. This is the word tonight. Listen to this. Forgiveness is not an option. Forgiveness is not an option. To forgive me, to release anger and resentment towards someone for an offense, a flaw, or a mistake. And let me tell you, three things happen. Just, I, I, just a name a few things happens. When you've been, when you've been violated or when you've been hurt, one thing happens is called animosity, which is a strong hostility towards somebody. Another emotion is called resentment. This is called bitter indignation at having been treated unfairly. Another emotion is Bitterness. This is anger and disappointment at being treated unfairly. And if you are experiencing these emotions towards somebody, you have not forgiven them. And you know, I heard the Lord spoke to me today. He said, it's some underlying unforgiveness in people right now. They shouting, they praying, they dancing, they, 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 they giving God praise, they preaching. They sing it, but they got animosity towards somebody. They got resentment towards somebody. They got bitterness towards somebody. Y'all got quiet. I don't care if it is your husband. It's towards somebody. I don't care if it's your wife. If it's your son, your daughter, your mama, your daddy. He said if you got animosity Resentment or bitterness towards somebody. You are not, you are operating in unforgiveness. I looked up the word silent, silent unforgiveness, silent resentment. In other words, they, they, people will act like they've forgiven you. But in silent ways, they act angry towards you. Or in certain things they would say or out of the out of the blue, or, or in, in certain ways they start acting. You, you, you seem nice to me for a while, and then all of a sudden I just get bitterness from you. Oh, y'all quiet here. Uh, and you wonder, what's, what's the problem? Why you, I don't know where this talks. Just said that to me. It's because somewhere, it got quiet on me, I told you. Somewhere, when I speak in the tongue self, when I testify, I'm pulling down the mighty angels to do cartwheels and go back up to heaven and do cartwheels back up there. There is some bitterness. Y'all don't have to like me, but you better give. There is some unforgiveness. And let me tell you, the Bible didn't give a restriction on how many times to forgive. He said, forgive. Watch this. Not for sale. But forgive. Because for sale is, I give you something if you give me something. I will, be, I will forgive you if you act nice toward me. I'll forgive you if you change your ways. I will forgive. That's for sale. Forgiveness means, I'm going to read it again, to release anger, 
resentment towards someone for an offense, flaw, or mistake. Let me tell you how you know he ain't over it. Because when you get angry, it comes back up again. Uh, you ain't over it. I'll cry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do it. I love you so much. A month passed by, you get angry, and it come right back up. You still operating in unforgiveness, baby. I don't care how what you say. You got an unforgiving spirit, and God is not pleased with it. There is not a believer on the earth that can avoid experiencing being hurt and offended by somebody. Either you're going through it now, you've been through it, or you will go through it. You are going to be hurt. Y'all better hear me. Folks are going to do stuff, and they never will tell you I'm sorry. And you just got to keep living holy. You got to keep forgiving. You got to keep releasing. Because you got to understand forgiveness is a personal thing. It's not a we thing. It's a personal thing. If you never act right toward me, my job is to act right towards you. Y'all come on somebody here. Because some folks got too much pride to say I'm sorry. So you be waiting. Listen, don't hold your breath. Because some folks will never admit that I was wrong. I'm sorry for what I put you through. Am I right about it? And so they cannot initiate the forgiveness by saying I'm sorry because they just don't have it in them. So you got to initiate it whether they say I'm sorry or not. Y'all quiet on me here. It's going to get a little deeper because hold on. It's some bitter folks. It's some mean people. Y'all quiet here. Just mean and, un and unforgiving and resentful. And they treating everybody else like the person that violated them. Y'all got quiet. Come on, somebody. They treat every man like the man that violated them. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. They treat every woman like the woman that violated them. Everybody didn't hurt you. And even the person that hurt you, God said, I'm holding you responsible to let it go. Y'all got quiet on me here. But I could feel it. I could feel it in the spirit. They're still in the spirit realm. I was at home and I could feel it. If some people have not resolved some issues with their mothers, with their fathers, with their wives, with their husbands, with their children, you just going along. You so used to covering it up and just keep going. And you so used to letting it come up when they want to come out. But I come to tell somebody today, God said forgiveness is not an option. You got to release folks. I heard the Lord, I was just meditating on this last night. The Lord said, God didn't call us to be a jailer over a jail, like, like a jailer um, um, watches people behind security bars. Listen, you ain't no jailer to hold folks hostage to what they done to you a year ago. Let them folks live. Come on, somebody. Release folks out your heart. Y'all quiet here. You just don't know what they done. Release them. Forgive them. Keep going. Like we jealous, y'all. I'll never forget what you done to me. I'll never forget. And every time you see them, you thinking if you ain't saying it. Yep. Yep. Forgiveness, if, now listen, listen. Forgiveness is not an option that if you are saved. Y'all don't like this. They got quiet because you know I know it's in here. I can feel it. Unforgiveness. And you know what I learned? You know, we, you, you got to search yourself. It is so easy. No, y'all ain't know what I'm going to say. Yeah, y'all do not know what I'm about to say. But if you can say it, it is easy, though. It is so easy to look at the resentment in you. Instead of sit down and see, wow, I had it in me, too. I didn't even know it. I didn't, I didn't know I still had them ill feelings. I didn't know I was operating in unforgiveness like that. Because you're so easy to look at everybody else. 
Can I ask you a question? Yes, I can. Go ahead, Pastor. Have somebody offended you years ago? And when you think about it, it still makes you upset. You ain't let it go. If you can still feel it like it was yesterday, you still get angry like it was yesterday, you still get animosity and bitterness like it was yesterday, you have not let it go. You should be able to think about it and it don't bother you. Am I right? Come on, we got to be honest about some things now. This thing been happened. This thing happened five, ten years ago, but you still mad about it, and you thought you wasn't. Come on, let's be real. It's some wives and husbands still mad at each other. How do you know you still mad at each other? Because when certain topics come up, you get angry and you're fussing. Okay, y'all got quiet. So I told you they won't like this one tonight. It's a sign. That's what, okay. That's why demons is working on trying to get houses split up because of the spirit of unforgiveness. You ain't let it. You ain't let it go after you said I, I'm sorry. When he said if he if he if he offends you seven times a day, he said every time he say I'm sorry. Forgive him. Don't say I'm saying. Don't just say forgive me. Do it. Can, can I tell you something? Forgiveness is not just a word. It's an action. It is a letting. You know what it is? Can I tell you what it is? It's a choice. Because we like to blame conditions and circumstances instead of taking control of our emotions. You don't. You listen. You don't need to go to no doctor. You don't need to go to no, come to, come to Pastor Wyndham. I'll help you. You don't need no therapist. You need some Holy Ghost self-control. Control your emotions. Stop blaming everybody else. It's you. We choose, y'all quiet. We choose to hold on to stuff. Because you know why? Because it feel good. It feel good to be angry. You used to be angry so much that it feel good. You f it feel good to be bitter. Feel good to be the junkyard dog. Come on, man. Come on. Because that's all you, you blame everybody else. When, could I be honest with you? Unforgiveness is a choice too. And then you go to these therapists, they'll tell you, oh, it's not your fault. You can't help it. Yes, you can. They making money off of lying to you. When If Jesus said you can do it, why can't we? No, I understand folks been through some heavy stuff. They've been through some, I mean, but but I'm going to tell you something. Being, being a victim is not greater than being a victor. Oh, come on. Victory is greater than victimism. Come on, God can heal you if you want it. Am I right about it? It's what we choose. And I choose to forgive. Let me tell you something. A few years ago, I, 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 I got lied to. After 36 years of believing something, I got lied to. I found this out after 36 years. And I got hurt by it. But before, see, I couldn't help the hurt, but I could help the bitterness. I'm speaking from experience. I couldn't help the offense that came. But I could help myself from getting bitter. So when the, when, the, when the news came and I got hurt by it, I said, let me get up. Let me run to my offenders immediately and start showing love. That way it'll counteract any bitter. You know what that does? It, 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 it counteracted or stopped it, stop any hurt from just sitting there and building up. So I said, let me go to my offenders and hug them and love them before that bitterness starts setting in me. And therefore, Lord, y'all better hear me. And when they try to come back up again, I show love again until that. 
y'all, until I lose every bit of unforgiveness. I told her I would never bring it up to you again. I forgive you for it. I would never show it. Y'all quiet in that. I would never say nothing else about it because I choose to forgive. You got to start running to folks that offended you. Tell them I love you. Stop letting that unforgiveness just settle there. Just ain't talking to them, getting offended with them, don't want to say nothing. Y'all got quiet. And, and that's why so, let me tell you, that's why the devil comes in some of my marriages because some folks don't talk for days after they get mad. Then you let the sun go down on your wrath and you letting Satan come in and have his way and putting a wedge between y'all. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Get that stuff together before bitterness starts setting in. Y'all better hear me. If you're hurt, get it out in the air. Let's get it out in the open. Let's get it let's scream it out, talk it out, yell it out. But one thing we ain't going to do is that bitterness set up in us. Because let me tell you something. When you start growing for real, some of the things that people done to hurt you don't bother you no more. You just overcome. And I didn't go to no doctor for it. You know what I went to? Him. Lord, here it is. This bothering me, God. Take it to prayer. Every time it come up, I take it to prayer. Ah! Shot. I take it to prayer. Because I don't want that. I don't want to be like that. I'm too young to go around mad all the time. Man, come on. Because let me tell you something. I don't care how you smile. Y'all watch this. Okay, how you laugh and talk. When you got a resentful spirit, others can feel your aura. You can just feel you, and you one of my folks don't talk to you. Because what's on you repels folk. Y'all got quiet over me. People just don't want to be bothered. Nobody likes to bother me. Bother with me. Stop, at, stop being mad. It's just something that comes off an angry person. You can just feel it, and you get away from them. Am I right, man? I think I'm gonna go play with a, a vicious dog. I know he's growling and slobbing. I'm just, oh, pretty boy. He's woman to jump, jump that gate. Oh, pretty dog. I ain't gonna play with that dog. He vicious. You gonna play with a vicious dog? And he's showing his teeth and he's smiling at you. <laughs> well, what about a saint? They got that old mean spirit. You don't want to be bothered with them. I get away from you. I'm going to tell you this again. If you still have animosity, if you still have resentment, if you still have bitterness towards somebody, you still have not forgiven them. You know, life too short to be mad at your daddy forever. Life too short to be angry with your mama. Life too short to be angry with your kids forever. Angry with your coworkers, just angry with everybody. It's got to be a decision. Wait a minute. Now, now I ain't finna put up with no mess now. Cause he did say rebuke him, didn't he? Oh, okay, see we. <laughs> what's forgiveness without rebuke? <laughs> that's weakness. That's push. That's pushover. <laughs> But, but I, I refuse to go around being angry. I'm too young for that. Y'all hear me. I got too many people I have to help. It'll make you sick. You lose your hair. You get ulcers in your stomach. You look older than your age. Because that bitterness in your spirit. You wonder why your body going down. Because of that ugly spirit you got. And you know what time it is? Stop. It's time to stop blaming the devil for my anger problems. Some things the devil looking at, man, now look. I'm running, listen, I'm running to and fro the earth seeking whom I may divide. But I didn't do that. <laughs> man, I am running around the earth. I'm worried folk out. Now, I didn't do that one. Now, I'm bad, but I ain't that bad. 
I ain't that right, Sister Linda. First night, I ain't that bad now. I didn't make you cuss him. Because you know, some folks still got that cussing spirit. They, it, it only comes out when they mad. Y'all have to, okay, y'all quiet on me because I, ow! I know what I'm talking about. You know why they got that cussing spirit? Because they still ain't got rid of that worldly spirit. And that worldly spirit comes out when you get angry. Not quiet on me, brother. Let me ask. You ready? Because you ain't ready to fight. So you get mad. What? What? Yep. Y'all thought you were calm, cool, collect. You got me. No, man, fool. No, fool. You rowdy demon. Sit down somewhere. You just rowdy. That been in you the whole time. You got an unforgiveness, animosity, bitter spirit, and you ready to scrap. You ain't forgave nobody. Yes, y'all got quiet. You ain't forgave nobody. You ready? To, you ready to knock them out? Saints, listen to me. Yes, people hurt us, but we should be so mature in the spirit too. We, our first thought is not fight. First thought is not cuss. Because boy, I'll get down to this altar. First thought, <laughs> y'all better hear me. What you haven't, what, what haven't you, who haven't you forgiven tonight? Are they sitting in your house with you? Are they sitting in this church? Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, is it your, it, okay. Because I don't care what we do. I'm going to show you in a little bit. Amen, Unforgiveness, God, God do not play with the spirit. Amen. There's no justification for it. God gives no excuse for it. He gives, no, he gives us no excuse for staying angry. See, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. He said be angry and say not. But that being angry don't mean let it last forever. You can do something to make me angry. And I'm angry for a little bit and I'm done with it. But if I'm lingering with anger. If my anger is lingering. See, he, he didn't never say you can't get angry. Because when I see stuff is wrong, I get angry. Or you violate me. It's a, it's a sensory in me and God, that God put in everybody to let you know when you've been violated. And you stand up and say, hey, 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 listen, I don't like what you've done. Right? So you have a right to get angry. But I'm talking about anger that consistently sits upon you. Animosity consistently sits upon you. That is unforgiveness. If we had a disagreement and we settled it and I'm still angry about it. Come on, man, God. After three years, I'm still angry with it. I ain't forgiven you. You know, <laughs> I had somebody got angry with me before. And they're going to come to me and tell me I'm sorry. And I, it was that far. I, I'm looking like, what did I do? I ain't saying I'm perfect because I can't do wrong. And I don't know it. But they came to me and said, I'm sorry. And we mended it, everything. And, and a little while later, I found out that individual was still mad at me. Wait, watch this. Why? Because I didn't say I'm sorry. I ain't for to apologize for something I didn't do. What did I do? I didn't know anything about it. I thought you really come. And I fully accepted his apartment. Man, it's all right, man. Well, let's be brothers, man. Come on. Yeah. And we talked for a while like everything was okay. Come to find out. For sale. For sale. Because I didn't say I'm sorry, too. You know what? That apology that he gave me was not sincere. Yeah. Yo, you don't, you don't apologize to somebody because you want them to say I'm sorry, too. If they never say I'm sorry, let your forgiveness be genuine. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Let me ask y'all another question. Are we so prideful? That you can't go and apologize to somebody? That God told you to go say, I'm sorry. You know you hurt. You know what you've done. You know you've been a fool. And watch, the, oh, I got a good one for you. And the Lord, gonna, let me tell you, the Lord ain't going to tell you to stand up before the church and tell him I'm sorry. Because that's easy. I just want to stand up before the church. I want to tell Brother Ville I'm sorry. No, and exit out. Go to Brother Ville yourself. That's an easy way to do it. You know, I just want to tell you, I'm sorry, Sister Linda. 
Because everybody says, oh, yeah, I'm all right. No, go to her to yourself. And look at that person in the eye like you did when you were angry with them. <laughs> well, you were angry, but you looking at them. Man, you know. Ah! Use them same bug red eyes <laughs> to go to them and tell them, I'm sorry. Would you forgive me? Don't you know when you do that, you'll feel a years of weight lift off you? I'm sorry for the things I put you through. Would you forgive me? And when you tell them, you look at me now, you make that connection with that soul. Don't look, don't, don't, look. Bro, watch this. I heard it. I'm sorry, man. Man, what else you want, man? I'm sorry, bro. All right, man. And walk off. There ain't no sincere. sincerity. And you walking off looking like Martin Lawrence. You know how you go. Jingle? Yeah, hold up. Hold up. Oh. But, but seriously, you stand up looking like, you know what that do to me? If you offended me, and you come to me with a sorrow like that, it made me feel worse. You should have left me alone. You could not make eye contact with me. You couldn't set me down and humble yourself and be honest about it. Because to be honest with you, before you even came to me, I forgave you. I didn't wait for you to come to me because you might not ever come to me. <laughs> I've already released you. So when you do come to me, it'll be easy. Ah, it's easy. I'll forgive you. I, I forgave you the first time it happened. I was just wondering where you coming. <laughs> The prodigal son father was waiting for him. He already forgave him. He was down the street looking for his son. And he saw his son fall off. I've already forgiven you. Come on, son. Come on in. I already got your robe ready for you. The fatty cap is already ready for you. I've already released you. You hurt me. But before you said I'm sorry, I've already. Watch this. Oh, I like this one. Why did the father already forgive him? Because his love for his son was stronger than his hurt. Y'all better hear me. His love, the Bible said love will cover a multitude of sins. I love you so much until you hurt me, but I can't, I can't, listen, I, I can't turn you away when you come to me. I never stopped thinking about you when you left. Y'all hear me? Y'all come on, give God some praise. Y'all, we got to get the love walk back. How can we say we really love somebody, but we can't, we can't tell them we wrong when we done them wrong? You know, let me tell you something. If you're a conscious human being and you ain't it, now I ain't trying to be funny, but you, didn't, you don't ride the yellow bus. You ain't, y'all quiet. You ain't like that. No, I ain't being funny. I ain't been funny. You know when you stuck a knife in somebody. Y'all quiet on me. <laughs> you know when you have offended somebody. Husbands, you know you made that when you made that wife mad. Y'all got quiet. What are what? You know what, man? Stop acting crazy. Some of y'all ain't laughing. She quiet, she ain't saying nothing, but you know you offended that woman. And here we are with our pride for self. You know we men, we, we our egos. So, and while you eating, your stomach turning like, I know, I, should, I shouldn't have said that. Am I right? Am I, am I right, brother? I shouldn't have said that, man. And Holy Ghost, worry your head out. Man, but did you try to justify my man? She shouldn't have said that. And Holy Ghost said, no. Nah. You was wrong. Am I right? It, it just, it just ringing. You better, you, you need to go and apologize. Wait a minute. Holy Ghost, keep wearing that head out. 
and it's not going to let up till you go apologize. But watch this. Watch this. That feeling you get when you want to apologize, that, that weariness that you get, imagine people carry that for months and years. God saying go apologize, and they know they need to, but they won't. And they carrying that. They carrying that. They carrying that resistance and that pull. That's what's making them sick. It's the guilt that's making them sick. I ain't doing it. But God is telling you to do it, and you know you have to. I ain't doing it. And that, that knot you feeling right there, you know what it's turning to? Ulcers. Some folks dealing with stomach problems because you got bitterness. Y'all got quiet here. Y'all don't have to like this. It's coming from a spirit of unforgiveness. All right. Amen. See, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you got quieter tonight. I, I, I got y'all tonight. Because some of y'all got to get rid of this bitter anger, quick temper spirit. It, it doesn't matter how long we have been saved. We cannot allow ourselves to let offense and bitterness to go unchecked in our spirits. Why, Pastor? Because I see the bigger picture. Amen. What do you mean, Pastor? I'm going to show you in Scripture. Why I cannot let what you do cause me to stay unforgiving towards you because I'm looking at a bigger picture. Acts chapter 7. And see, this was going to help me to forgive you. Acts chapter 7. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see the bigger picture, Doc. Come on, man of God. Acts chapter seven. I told you this microphone will sound clear. Verse fifty-one. You ready? You stiff neck. This is Stephen, an uncircumcising heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did. So do you. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before the, of the coming of the just one, of whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. And when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. Boy, he got Stephen, boy, Stephen rebuked him so. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up into heaven and saw the glory of God and, and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, this is what he said, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And when he said that, it made them worse. They got worse. They got more angry. Look at verse 57. And they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran with one. Can you imagine? They put a stone you and they... They hear stop them with brick. They were so angry. I don't want to hear no more. Really, when he got to Jesus, and when he saw him, said, I see the Lord standing at the right hand of God. The Bible said they closed their ears and they came at him running with stones. And ran with upon him with one accord and cast him out the city and stoned him. <laughs> and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. Saul always wasn't saved. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. In other words, when he said, lay this not to their charge, in other words, God, I forgive them, and I pray that you forgive them too. Why was Stephen able to say that? Because he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father to come to receive him. He said, I see something bigger. That's why I can't sit here and let what y'all doing to me cause me to stay with unforgiveness because I see something you don't see. 
That's how you get. Lord, y'all quiet. That's how you overcome bitterness. You got to see something bigger than the situation. Y'all better hear me. I don't know about it. I'm getting stoned. I ain't like, Lord, now look. You crying at me with one voice. I'm going to try my best to stop you, kick you or something. But he saw something. When the, when the last time you saw something bigger than what you feel? We so wrapped up in what we feel until we can't never get over. Get out your feelings. Look at the bigger. Jesus is coming. Well, if he come, you got that mess in your heart right now. Right now. If he come right now, what would he find in you? Would he find an unforgiveness in you? Would he find that bitterness in you? You got to let people go. If they done you wrong, okay, let them go. Y'all quiet on me. You know why we hold on to it? This is from my spirit. You know why we hold on to it? Because we too dirt to ourselves. You hurt me. Me. Until you so dirt to you, until you can't release forgiveness on this brother. Or on that sister. Because your feelings mean too much more to you than anything else. Right, it is selfish. I'm getting down to that selfish spirit too. Y'all hold on. Thank you. Y'all Y'all up in there tonight. Oh, y'all hear me? We mean too much to us. Who am I to hold up? Yo, the charge that you've done to me against me and you ask for forgiveness. With tears in your eyes. And I'm still here holding that stuff against this man. You know why? Because I'm too selfish and I'm and me mean too much to me. See, <laughs> see, when when you know, I want y'all to hear this one. Because some of y'all gonna say amen on this one. When you know that you haven't or have not intentionally hurt anyone, and you feel that it wasn't fair. And you've done nothing to deserve what was done to you. It is easy to think that you have a right to be bitter and angry at someone because of what they've done to you. Amen. You just don't know I have a right to feel like this. The stuff you put me through. You feel like you have a right to hold them hostage. Y'all got quiet on me because somebody doing it. You did this to me. It's been years down the road. It's gone. So you feel justified. And so whenever an argument takes place, you just throw that up and you shut the whole argument down. You won. Because you got something you can bring up to do the TKO in the argument. That's wrong. Y'all don't like me because I feel it in here. I can feel it in here. And that person already feel bad about what they done. You know how to get them. You know what to pull on them to make them feel guilty so they can stop arguing with you. Y'all don't like me. Come on, somebody. You strong. Watch this. You strong in your unforgiveness, and they strong in their guilt. And so they know what to do. They know what to bring up. They know how to injure you. They know how to shut you down. Because you feel like you have a right to be like this. Forgiveness is not an option. Y'all quiet on me because I know what God told me. Why are you using somebody else's shortcomings as a weapon to take advantage at the, of somebody at the moment? Why are you using somebody's shortcoming as a weapon to empower yourself in a moment of a discussion that you don't like to shut it, the whole conversation down. That's unforgiveness. You can't justify it. You cannot, ain't no way you can pretty it up. You are wrong. Y'all quiet, this preacher. I guess I'm, I'm put by my. You got to listen. When you forgive somebody, you don't bring it back up no more. Yes, 
And if you got a problem bringing up people's dirt and you don't feel the resistance not to do it, yep. it should be something you say, don't say that. Yep. Don't say that. Yep. You're going to create a bigger situation. Yep. If you don't feel that drawback, you are ve- you in a very bad you are in a very bad shape. You got some heavy unforgiveness in you that you gonna have to work out of you. Y'all don't hear me here. Holy Ghost to tell you, don't you put that out there? I don't care how you feel right now. Ain't about what you feel. Who are you anyway? Yep. <laughs> Ain't about me. Ain't about you. Shut your mouth. Yep. And now you want to get mad at him because he ain't coming home. Because he'd rather be out with the boys. I'd rather be out with the boys too. You keep bringing up my guilt. <laughs> Y'all got quiet over here. I want to be in the house with you. You keep magnifying my faults before my eyes. You accuser of the brother. You got to let that stuff. Y'all got quiet over there. You got to let it go. If y'all been through a situation and you have to work it out, you know, for a season, it causes arguments and division. But if y'all been through that season and God has mended that back to get the mended relationship back together while you bringing up a thing that causes it to be split before. You know why? Unforgiveness. No option if you fully be saved. Right, man. You know that. Come on, preacher. Just angry. I can feel it. Just angry. Frustrated. You know why? Because you ain't let it go. Somebody got to make a vow to tell yourself, I would not bring that back up to them again. I learned something as a leader. Once I correct somebody on something, I'm done with it. I ain't finna bring it back up to you. I ain't finna tell you what you did three years ago. Once I'm, once I rebuke you sharply, I'm done. I ain't finna keep bringing it back up. For what? That means I'm still angry about it. <laughs> and if I, even if I'm still angry about it, I still let it go. <laughs> Some of y'all in here gotta stop doing, gotta stop doing that. It's quiet on me going on this left side, cause they said no me, boy. They, like, they, they get that Mike Tyson blow. Yep. I know how to get you. All right, I know how to get you. Remember what you did to me, and that person feel bad about it. And you wonder why they ain't talking to you. You never talk to me. You shut them down. <laughs> but once you bring a person past, that's no more communication. And really, it's not a communication. You're not communing with me when you're bringing up my fault. That's, right. that's not communication. Not. Communication means it's fresh. That's old stuff. Communication fresh. That's repeated. You're bringing up repeated discussions. Y'all quiet on me here. I wouldn't even get married to a person if I'm angry with them. Why would you, get, why would you marry somebody you angry at? Y'all quiet. Let me, let me go because forgiveness is not an option. Work out your situation before you marry somebody. You whole five years is just sour. Look at that person in the bed like, God, what I just, oh, God. Something wrong. I hope ain't nobody in here. They sleep, you look over like, man. <laughs> they turn up. <laughs> here you are, just look at me. Just spirit just vexed. What have I got myself into? They see my damn paradise. Here you are, just mean mugging them in they sleep. <laughs> and watch this. It ain't the snoring bothering you. <laughs> see, it's just the regret. We got quiet, Mr. Linda. 
I sure hate I did this. And now, when they wake up, you act like you love them. You know what that is? That's that secret unforgiveness. Oh, ho, ho. you try to make the best out of a situation you think is bad because you are unforgiven. It's got quiet on me. Let me go on to my next level because I, let me go on because. Listen, we, her and I, we're growing, but we've come a long way. We're a solid marriage. We don't bring up, we don't bring up old stuff as a weapon to hurt the other one. We don't do that. I'm supposed to be working with her. Why devour her? And she my best friend. She works with me. She helps me. Why would I abuse and hurt my helper with her faults or my faults? I can't help. Listen, y'all. I, listen. I would not have no unforgiveness with, with my wife. We can't go like that, first lady. <laughs> I'm make me sad just think about something like that. I would, man, no, y'all, my baby, 25 years. How can you? How? I want to ask you a question. You don't have to answer. How can you hold unforgiveness towards somebody that you say you madly in love with? It's no way you in love. Because remember, love covers a multitude of sins. Why haven't you covered it? Because you don't really love her. <laughs> the Bible said, what? Love working no ill. <laughs> Am I right about it? Love working no ill. I'm not going to push your buttons and I know what buttons to push. I'm just going to get at you. I know, gonna, I know it's going to make you mad. I'm going gonna, gonna to talk about them moles on your neck. Yeah, you got them moles on your neck, huh? I don't know. I'm just saying something. Like you got them old nasty moles on your neck. What are you saying that for? So we ain't saying that y'all laughing. I ain't got no bobber heads tonight. I ain't got no bobber heads. I got them stiff necks. Let me tell y'all. Oh, I'm gonna go on with this. I'm gonna make this one point right here. Looks mean a lot in the marriage. Don't think that your looks don't count no more. Brothers, get your hair cut. Shave. Trim yourself up for your woman. When did looks stop mattering? Part of looks was a part of you catching them. I think looks going to be a part of you keeping them. Can I get can I get a witness? You didn't meet her, you didn't meet her with boogers in your eyes. You didn't meet her with your hair rolled up in rollers. You meet him with rollers in your head. Can I can I get somebody here? Did you meet him with did you meet him with rollers in her head? You probably wouldn't even talk to her, would you? Big jumbo rollers. Hey! Bye. Them big jumbo rollers. In the laundromat. laundromat. No. You didn't meet him with his hair on a comb. His hair was comb. Come on, somebody here. You, 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 you. To me, my wife get more pretty than pretty every year. And I tell her that all the time. I, you look good, girl. 
You look good, girl. I ain't no hypocrite teller. No, no, I do it at home. I ain't just, I ain't just talking like that in church to make y'all say, oh, pastor. I don't know what you say. I still do it. <laughs> Come on now. You don't tell your wife she's pretty, I'll bet you. And don't get mad if she like that compliment because she ain't used to it. Y'all quiet. If she like the like compliment that other men give her, she I won't say she have a right to it, but don't you get mad because mad, 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 she's not getting it at home. Hello, Walls. Hello, Walls. If you can't find nothing, find something about me like, Woo, what big long list you got, baby? <laughs> Find some? Oh, look your fingernails, girl. <laughs> but can I be real with you, though? Whenever there's unforgiveness, you don't see that person the way you're supposed to see them. Y'all quiet on me here. You got the most beautiful wife in the world. But because of your unforgiveness, you can't see what you really got. Y'all quiet. You got the one of the nicest looking husbands. In one in the world. But because of your bitterness toward him, you'll find negativity about him. And you take down that nice look that God gave to you and you start looking at errors and flaws on his skin and his standing her. His receding her line. Y'all got quiet. Y'all, y'all, come on now. And you just focus on the, you focus on the, um, the negatives that don't look good to you. Losing is her. But God, but you got such a nice husband. And other ladies love the way he look. You got one of the most beautiful wives in the world. And you don't see it, but all them other men like, why if I had her? But because of, because of the spirit of unforgiveness, you lose what you got while you still have it. Y'all hear me? You lose what you have while you still have it. Bump this ungodly unforgiveness. Somebody got to make a promise tonight. Watch this. I will never bring it back up to you again, baby. Make a promise. Go to somebody you know you know you offended. You ain't crazy. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Listen, don't buy me things to replace you saying I'm sorry. Right. I bought you this. Like, but that ain't saying nothing to me out your mouth. That's just a gift. I bought you this because you're trying to make yourself feel better. No, go to somebody. Use the gift of your mouth. That tongue with that God put in your mouth. Forgive me. Y'all quiet over here. Even though he done wrong. Find what you done wrong. I can't talk about you right now, bro. I got to talk about me. We both in this, but I'm wrong for me. And I bet you, you will see things start working out. Some things are just cloudy. cloudy but you got bitterness. 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 You ain't seeing the bigger picture. The bigger picture. Stephen saw something bigger than the stones. He saw the stone. He saw the rock. Y'all better hear me. He saw them little stones compared to the, the stone. These little stones right here ain't mattering. I see something bigger. Go ahead and stone me. Get me out of here. Because I got something bigger than this. Y'all better hear me. Oh, come on, here. Y'all. That's something bigger than that. Come on here. He the one that hold the whole building up. The whole building rests on the chief cornerstone. You remove that, the whole thing falls. 
Y'all hear me today? Yes, Make your mind up tonight. I listen. I, I gotta change. I gotta change my spirit. Because I'm 